Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Noel, and today we're not really talking about anything specific, anything in particular. My review of the Nike Zoom Air Pegasus 37. Uh, I'm scheduling that for next week because that's going to be approximately a little over a month since I received the shoes. So I'll be able to give a fully well-rounded review by then. But this week is basically just, you know, keeping the engine running and sometimes it feels like I'm just spinning my wheels because there aren't really any races happening. Still, the good thing about um, no racing is that you can really focus on other things that matter in your life. One of my friends, Tim Ford, who is the CEO of MX Endurance, recently wrote an article about the things that um, the COVID-19 pandemic has allowed triathletes to work on during this time where there is practically no racing, unless you count virtual racing as real racing. Um, so I'm going to drop the link in the description box so that you can read it and you know try to gain some perspective about why we're continuing to train even with no races on the near horizon and and whatnot. Sometimes it feels a little out of touch and insensitive to be talking about racing and running and all of these things, athletics, when you know the rest of the world is in the throes of this pandemic and a lot of people have lost their jobs. Like for instance, um, just last week, ABS-CBN was denied their franchise um, application. So basically, the entire television network with so many people, like 11,000 people, basically can't broadcast. And so they've had to scale down their operations. And this week, they started letting go of some people, even some long-standing talents. And it's been really sad because... As somebody who works around media, I've met so many people who work at ABS-CBN and, and for, for these people who have basically spent their entire careers at the network, suddenly to get the rug pulled out from under them during a pandemic, no less, when they're so, there are so many people who are also struggling for work, it's not great. There were other things at stake during this time and I don't know why the government chose to put 11,000 people out of work. When you when you talk about, oh, I have so many problems because I don't have any races, you know, I don't know if I have any reason to train, whatever, it just feels very hashtag first world problems when people are dealing with much worse. <laughs> and so it's kind of like it's been difficult for me also to, to talk about running and triathlon because you know these are not essential to life they're essential in terms of you know they provide exercise they boost health and well-being but there are many other ways to boost health and well-being that don't involve swimming cycling or running I i'm trying to navigate that and trying to be you know sensitive about these things this week I was ranting about, I, on Thursday night, our community, my condo complex, our community announced that we had two new cases of COVID-19 and the, they actually live in my particular building. So they announced that after a month of operating the swimming pool, they were closing it down along with other um, public spaces like the playground and the basketball court. So I, w I was pretty bummed because whenever I use the pool, there's really no one there that I actively avoid having to uh, actively avoid going to the pool when there are too many people or when there are any people. So I'm usually there when the sun's quite high because no Filipino wants to get tanned. Yeah, and I, I've been very responsible with the way that I've been using the pool. I I'm in there, I do my workout, I get out, and I, you know, I leave. I don't stick around for anything. And I don't, I certainly don't give opportunity for myself to breathe on anyone there in case I'm an asymptomatic carrier. And so I thought I was doing a pretty good job being responsible. 
And so for the pool to be closed and for that particular form of exercise to be pulled out from, from me, I was so annoyed. If you use the pool properly, if you're there just to swim laps, if you're not there to socialize at all, if you limit your time there, it's actually one of the safest places to be outdoors during this pandemic because outside air dilutes the droplets and whatever if uh, if SARS-CoV-2 exists in aerosol form, outside air would quickly dilute the infective dose. So it should be safe, right? And then I realized that a lot of other people, when they go to the swimming pool, they don't go there to swim. They go there to find respite from the heat, you know, to splash around in the water, feel like they're working out, but basically they're just there to meet with friends and socialize. And when most people here in the condo complex use the pool, that's how they use it. And so I had to understand why the... The community, the administration here decided to close the pool down until further notice. I was a little bit annoyed at the lynch mob that um, gathered online because they were like, oh, we have to find out where exactly do these cases live in the building. And I said, why, whatever for, are you going to visit them? I'm just thankful that I can. I have my bike trainer and I can run outside, fingers crossed. I can still continue to run in this community. I, I'm not sure if the lynch mobs here are going to push for no running again. Oh, by the way, we just passed 120 days of community quarantine, which means the Philippines has the longest quarantine period in the world. Beat that, China. Wait, people don't understand that even if quarantine restrictions have been loosened so that people can go back to work. It's not really because there is no threat from the virus or from catching it. It's just that, you know, people had to go back to work. My complaints were very first world problems and I should be thankful actually that some of these rules are in place to minimize the chance that COVID could be transmitted throughout this community. In other news, last week, Iron Man Philippines announced that it was not going to hold the event as originally rescheduled in October, but instead they're moving to June 2021. I really believe that they needed to postpone to the following year because it, from the looks of things, this country wasn't handling um, COVID-19 mitigation efforts quite well so those people who were asking for refunds they're not going to get their refunds but they're going to get a chance to race next year with the hopes that maybe a vaccine will be available maybe um, transmission will be slowed down and you catch all of the asymptomatic cases out there transmitting the virus etc etc it kind of sucks that it took this long for iron man to announce the postponement till next year but yeah ultimately it was the smart thing to do and here's the funny thing so that even if iron man philippines has officially postponed their date uh i have heard news that subic bay the venue for the race has started to open its gates there are no more checkpoints barring people from outside subic or surrounding territories to come inside and um uh, patronize the establishments there go to the beaches go to all the attractions that are in subic bay so it was kind of setting things up so that people could start training and then could make the race itself um, but I, I think um, smarter heads prevailed and uh, the local government in coordination with Ironman realized that that would be in everyone's best interests if they just postponed the race. I admit at the start of this community quarantine, I was, I was way too optimistic and I signed up for a race in Vietnam, the Da Nang International Marathon. I signed up for their 10K run uh, just because 
I was thinking that I could get out of the Philippines by August. And by June, it was starting to look like that was not going to be a possibility. So kudos to Pulse Active, the organizers for the Danang International Marathon, because they proactively sent out an email to all their international participants and asked us if we were going to race this year or if we would like to defer to next year. And by June, I already kind of realized that it was wishful thinking to be able to leave the Philippines by August, travel elsewhere in the world. So I asked to defer my slot to next year. And yeah, last week, they sent out an email confirming that they had transferred my slot to next year. So hopefully next year I can pay back this kindness from Pulse Active and race the race, enjoy it, and tell people about it so that more people can come. I think the what I'm concerned about is that as our neighboring ASEAN countries have really shown that they've got a handle on this virus and for some of these countries community transmission has been at zero or very low for the last month i'm i'm quite concerned that the philippines could be left behind as the rest of the world has started to reopen i mean if you take a look at europe they're already considering allowing intra-european travel so that they can you know restart their economies and get tourists and um sporting events are going to start getting held again like um i think the tour de france is supposed to be pushing forward in august um super league triathlon has announced what they call their arena games in which their athletes or the athletes who are currently based in europe can travel to rotterdam to race in a hybrid real-life and virtual race involving swim, bike, and run. So basically, they'll swim in a pool and then get on their bike trainers poolside and then the treadmill. So the bike trainer and treadmill portions uh, will be visualized on Zwift and um, you can basically watch the avatars try to get ahead of each other <laughs> on that platform. So that's going to be televised and streamed online on superleaguetriathlon.com. Um, it's supposed to be like the first major triathlon event in 2020 because the races, the ITU races are still postponed as far as I can tell. So yeah, the world is restarting. You, you've got those races coming back. Vietnam is, you know, pushing through with their with their mass participation races but the philippines we're kind of still stuck um we might even be in a worse position now than 120 days earlier so here's the thing when i say that i'm doing my part it means that you know i'm i'm staying home i'm social distancing and i wear a mask whenever i go out but i keep hearing this this um this narrative or framing that Filipinos are naturally hard-headed or, or what they call pasaway, which means that even if you're told what to do, you do the opposite of it. And according to research that um, both Google did on um, Google Mobility, you know, so basically the location um, data from your app is sent to Google and then they analyzed how much or how little Filipinos are moving through the pandemic or through the quarantine. And they found that Filipinos had the lowest um, mobility out of all Southeast Asian countries during the periods, I think it was March to April or March to May. And then a survey by the Asian Development Bank showed that... Um, Filipinos are not Pasaway at all. We, then the ADB conducted this survey in 24 Asia-Pacific countries. Uh, only three words apply. Obedient, compliant, and acquiescent. They hunkered down in their homes and ventured out rarely. On the rare occasions that they left their homes, it was mostly to buy food or medicine and basic necessities. 
even those with medical issues, mostly postponed their schedules with doctors and hospitals. The risk of getting the virus outweighing the need to get urgent medical attention. In a survey of 24 countries, ADB's stringency index ranked the Philippines second with 92.9% strictness level after Nepal's 95.2%. So that's the strictness of the lockdown. And uh, the survey says that Filipinos were generally compliant with the lockdown's conditionalities. Um, Filipinos had actually more incentive to defy lockdowns because we're one of the most densely populated countries in the world, especially in the cities like Metro Manila and Metro Cebu. Uh, Filipinos stayed put in their homes. The article says most Filipinos preferred to shelter in place even in congested slum areas where 10 people are packed in a small shanty. So honestly, to say that people were undisciplined and that's why they caught the virus, that's actually, I don't think that's true. I think it's really just the inability or unwillingness to do the three things that other countries were successfully able to do to quote-unquote bend their curve or flatten their curve downwards. It's, it's basically test, trace, isolate. Um, and if, you, if you're not able to test and to trace your cases, then you know, you're going to see what we have here in the Philippines now. It's community transmission and you don't know who's carrying the virus. So yeah, I did my part. Now it's time for the other actors here to do their part. Anyway, I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. Um, I hope that you're able to do the sports that you love or at least, you know, have that escape valve to release any tension that you're getting because of this pandemic and I really hope that by the next update of this sort that I release that I have better news. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to leave a comment, please do so in the box below. Um, all of my social media is also there so if you want to connect and get in touch, you can get in touch with me through there and I will see you again next time.